Hello everybody, this is Bud and this video is about terminals. Uh, I have this script here. Uh, I've had this for a very long time. Uh, I3 term, uh, which I use to launch uh, terminals. Uh, now it is a bit messy here because I was testing out stuff with GNOME terminal and stuff like that here. Uh, because I, I made a, a draft of this very video yesterday. Uh, but it just got <laughs> too, too uh, uh, many sidetracks and, and uh, long, whatever. Uh, but I want to talk about terminals um, and we'll see where we land here. I have some ideas. So right now I don't have many applications open. I, I only have uh, Sublime here and for terminals and those four terminals, we can see them here. This is, this is my like absolute bare minimum uh, uh, yeah, desktop stack or whatever. Uh, actually this, if I close the blind, this is how uh, how I start X. It, it always have this tabbed container with these four uh, terminals open. And this shows output from uh, XFCE uh, uh, things. It's actually system D uh, log or displaying stuff from both um, XFC panel, XF settings and Thunar at the moment. Uh, so they are collected into a single log here that is displayed in this terminal. I really like to be able to have that because sometimes there is useful stuff here and I yeah, I sometimes um, hack on the XFCE components and stuff like that. So it's, it's this is useful for me. King, that is i3 king, which are the window rules. So whenever I, uh, if I open Sublime again here, we can see that that uh, triggered a, a i3 king window rule, and then I get the information about that. It's it's a bit annoying that that it gets that the text is like this, you know. But whatever. It's this is also useful. I I need this kind of i3. This is. Uh, tail f of a log file that I create for all my all my custom scripts basically I think even this one does that I've added this log logging function that uh, redirects standard error to a log file uh, which I've stored in an environment variable bash put log here so and everything that gets logged to that file is printed here uh, so, so that is also extremely useful uh, and this is uh, my good old uh, i3 info script that displays uh, information about the currently active window. So all, all of these, I, I, I kind of use them all the time and it's just annoying it, to close them uh, and open them when needed. Instead, I prefer to always have them open. But I actually have key bindings so for, for these two. So press that super Y it is. Uh, it brings up this info terminal and it creates it if it doesn't exist and super shift y brings up that i3 log terminal um, okay so that's my bare minimum but i also usually have this terminal uh, and this terminal it looks different oh yeah i have a different color scheme and a different uh, um, font in that that terminal and I uh, also like to have this terminal available, a floating terminal, also with a different font. And this, these two, by the way, have a slightly different color scheme. Right, right now, I'm I'm in the process of testing out different color schemes here, so, or and, and also different terminals. Uh, so they look almost the same, but they actually have slightly different color schemes. The thing is, I want this specific, this one uh, that I toggle now. I want that terminal to have a very Distinguish uh, because it, it it is a special terminal for me. I, I I actually prefer to have it something like this. Maybe not this exact theme, but uh, just so I know that this is this terminal. Because I also often open more terminals, like temporary terminals, like maybe open this and here in this terminal just to test out the script or something. I maybe want to test out this i3 term script. I can I can do it here and then uh, do something else here. I don't know. Maybe do this, makes it more clear. 
but usually I actually don't do this. I, I, I have it like this. So that's why it's nice to have a different color scheme in this one, because that this terminal, the purple one, it's, it's bound to a, a key binding. So if I bring up this guy again, so you can see the key bindings here, I press super shift return, it always focuses this. And if it is focused, it toggles it. Um, and um, another uh, terminal that I often have open, which also have a different layout theme font thing, is this. It's uh, typisked. My touch typing uh, program uh, that I made a couple of years ago, I, 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 I use this almost every day. And as you can see, let's bring it to workspace one. It also have a different uh, color scheme and a different font uh, because I just find this to look better here in this thing. It's not unusual for me, and I usually don't close this. I, I or if I close it now, and now we can also open King here, and if I start that application, it always uh, puts it on, on workspace two here for me. We can see that in uh, i3 King that it's found uh, typisked, and then it moved that to workspace two, floating enable, blah, blah, blah. And also puts it in that like off-centered uh, position here. And that's just how I like it. Um, what I'm trying to say is that I have a lot of terminals <laughs> open at the same time. Uh, usually 15 terminals. It's, it, it's not, uh, it's not uh, uncommon for me at all. And I also, this one is also kind of common. I, I often do this and then I'm to, to do like pseudo pacman as yyu or something. I like to do that in a separate tab, not use the main terminal, so to speak, for that. So, I, and also like have a large terminal for this kind of stuff. You see, different terminals for different purposes. Like sometimes you need a, a wide terminal, sometimes you need just need to keep keep an eye on output and stuff like that. Yeah, I guess I should also, if, if I open a browser, it, that actually opens two new terminals. So I have like browser terminal, this is output from Vivaldi. Uh, so, and VB4C is like my local web server that is, I, I have connected in quotation marks to, to an extension I have so I can send stuff from the browser into that server, whatever. I need these two as well. Uh, I really do. Uh, so, so this this is normal uh, for me. Usually, don't have more terminals open in this. Uh, I call it the monitor because they are all I monitor output of different things here, uh, and put them in this special tab. I don't know. Let's open Thunar or something here. So we. This is usually how it looks like. Um, or usually I, I also listen to some media. Now I, I used to also open MPV in a terminal, but I, I just figured it's probably better because I know it running MPV in the terminal actually uh, uses a bit more resources than not use opening MPV from a terminal. Um, whatever, it, it doesn't really matter. Stupid sidetrack. Uh, let's get back to this. Um, Without getting into any details about it really, because I just don't feel like it and I, I don't want to go on that rant and I haven't made any decisions on that part yet. So let's not even say anything more about it. Let's just say that URXVT, which has been my terminal of choice, uh, basically since I started using Linux, very quickly I switched to using URXVT. Um, that package is uh, now orphaned and out of date on Arch Linux uh, in the official repositories. Arch RxVT Unicode. Here we can see the package. Here we can see that it's orphaned. We can see that it's been flagged out of date since 11.23 here, uh, 2021. So, um, it's been out of date for for more than six months here, more, almost eight months. Um, and the thing is, 
we are on 9.26 now, 9, 9.30 is actually out and 9.29 and 9.30 of uh, RxVT Unicode, which is also known as URXVT. Uh, the updates are quite, uh, um, make a big impact. They, they improve uh, URXVT quite a lot. So it's really annoying that this is out of date. Uh, so you either have to yeah, manually download the source code and build it. It's not a big deal to do so, or use one of the AUR packages. And there are many AUR packages for this, uh, which is also a bit annoying. All, all of this, I, I get to, to the point here, but just to show you some, some stuff. This one is the one I have installed now. Uh, Rx VT Unicode True Color Wide Glyphs. So uh, many of these packages, and you can see this is very recently updated here, uh, 13th uh, June. Um, this comes with a bunch of patches, uh, and the patches actually improve improve your XVT. Uh, so it's fine, um, but. Uh, Still, uh, even if you install it from AUR, you have to, uh, you know, when you when you update, you have to compile the program. With AUR, it takes much longer time than, than getting a pre-built uh, binary, which you get here. It's much faster. It just there are some programs that I just don't want to, to have. That I that I just want to be uh, uh, built and and uh, maintained by, by the, the distro and the terminal is definitely one of them and I guess the browser would be another one you know I wouldn't like to use like even if I have whatever whatever <laughs> I just realized I, I used Vivaldi from AUR for a very long time so but whatever I it I, I wish this was in in the official repositories uh, and a, a, a version you could use and of course you can use this I have been using I was using this when this wasn't out of date of course but the, this is the that weird feeling and that is kind of the fe feeling the reason I got into Arch in the first place is was like why why do I have to use this outdated software I know there is a better version of that why can't I Please, please let me have it. And then Arch is like, yeah, yeah, we we are bleeding edge. We have we have what you want, and we update everything. We we don't we are not dependent on on kernel updates or fixed dates. It's a rolling release. Blah blah blah. This was kind of the reason I got into Arch in the first place. Um, <clears throat> and um, the thing is, it actually got orphaned. Um, was it yesterday or two days ago? And it's kind of my fault in quotation mark uh, because uh, I was the one who who, <laughs> who has been nagging about this not being updated uh, whatever let's not get into that here now because this is supposed to be about terminals but that is kind of the background here why I am actually not using your XVT these terminals are not your XVT what we see on screen here they are actually extern because that's uh, what I uh, uh, I figured I, I, I would try Xterm instead because to be fair also even if RxVT Unicode it is it is an old program but it is still being maintained and uh, updates are uh, coming for it and, and uh, uh, development is done on it um, but it's not like super active and, and to be fair the, 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 the source tree is kind of a mess and you know maybe or whatever but it is it it does work and the thing is your xvt has something that none other terminal does better it it is best in one on one single thing and that single thing is kind of the the thing that i am most interested in i i will get to this because this video i thought we can do a quick comparison uh, on the different emulators uh, terminal emulators and see uh, talk a bit about the differences and the reasons uh, why one would use one or the other uh, of course we cannot cover all of the terminal emulators because there are so many of them um, but let's let's start with the with your here 
let's open LX Tasks also, which is my preferred task manager to view like resource resources and stuff like that. It's not perfect, but it's it's fine. Uh, Xterm. So sort by name. Xterm. There. Now we can see all Xterm instances here. And we can see that they all use more or less the same amount of, of memory here. RSS, I don't remember what it stands for, but this is the best metric in quotation mark to, to measure uh, if you want to see memory usage like this. The, uh, actually, the best, the best way to do this is to look at how much memory am I using now. I'm using 15, 72, 64, whatever here. You see that here. Uh, and to measure <laughs> how much memory an application uses, you close a, a running application and then you subtract it from here because sometimes this is not at all what an application is using. This doesn't have to be true, whatever. Let's not get into it, but it is the metric that we will use here in this video. I'm just putting that out there, there that this is not like 100% science what we are about to do. I don't know if I close this one. Now I don't know which one of these uh, this is, but uh, and it's also impossible here since the memory usage seems to be fluctuating a bit. But let's say that it is 1550. I close this and it went down to. 1555 it actually increased uh, the pad Wh whatever we cannot use that either i guess but also you can do it the other way around and see how much it jumped up jumps up whatever um the point i want to make here is that x term is extremely lightweight it only uses 14 megabytes per terminal and that that is not a lot uh, and even if you uh, have an extreme terminal usage like I do, like I do uh, with um, 15 terminals, or now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, ten terminals. Uh, but I, I can easily get up to 15. Uh, seldom more than 20. But uh, even if I have 10 terminals, that's just 140 megabytes or just 140 megabytes. It's still uh, lightweightish. But this is where URXVT, if, if this would have been URXVT, the memory usage would be maybe 40 megabytes. Uh, it's kind of impossible for me to demonstrate that exactly here now, uh, since that would mean I would have to, well, in, in a way I could do that. I could uh, make a break in the recording and just start it using URXVT instead here, but Let's do this instead. Let's say this uses 40 megabytes. And also they have different content, remember? Uh, so it, it doesn't really seem to matter what is displayed in, in, uh, and running in the terminals. They, they use around 40 megabytes. Because a terminal application is kind of, or, or an emulator, it's kind of an easy program. It just displays texts, have a buffer open like this. But I guess it increases after time here, for example, this log here, if, if I have this running for, for a couple of days, you know, it, 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 this will start to get up to the megabyte uh, uh, size of, of text in this, and th that should have an impact on, on, on the RAM usage as well. Also, if you're wondering, this is how I have these tabs here organized. So I have monitor as a tab in this container, and then I have everything else in this container on different tabs and the monitor in in turn have nested tabs like this that i just like it like that um but let's open your xvt we can do that by just typing your xvt and there now we have a your xvt terminal open let's try to find it here uh you xvt there it is your xvt uses 20 megabytes of uh memory uh, and I guess I can do this. Just open another one. Your XVT. Now we have two instances, and they are uh, using 20 megabytes. So around 20 megabytes for a just empty terminal running running bash. Uh, and another one would also use 
So it multiplies here by 20, and that is, it's not twice as much as, as uh, X term, but um, uh, 10 uh, terminals with X term, that's like 150, 10 terminals with URXVT, that's 20 megabyte. But URXVT have this uh, special feature that you can run it in, in daemon client mode. So you start a process called URXVT D. And now you can see I have that running only using six megabyte of RAM because right now there are no clients connected to this daemon. Um, oh, I didn't mean to open one there. I meant to open it here. So if we do URXVT C is what you do because then you open a client window you will see in the task list here that it doesn't change. It actually, now that client belongs to this uh, daemon and we can also see that it released uh, the terminal here, so to speak, it attached uh, this, this from this terminal. And now if we open a couple of more here, I guess we could, let's open, let's open 10 of them. Four, uh, no. Let's 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 just do U R X V T C. <laughs> I guess I can do this. I meant to write a for loop and stuff like that. Okay, I couldn't do it. I open two, four, five, uh, seven, nine. U R X V T C. Ten terminals. Now I have 10 terminals open and it's still URXVT still only uses 28 megabyte. 10 terminals, 28 megabyte of, of uh, uh, RAM and that, that is 150 megabyte with Xterm. Um, so in this sense, URXVT is it, it's best in class. There is uh, no one that comes close, but actually there are quite a lot of terminals that is better than Xterm in, if you do this, because there are more terminals that have this uh, server client uh, feature. Actually, quite a lot of them do have this. Um, XFCE for terminal is um, a GTK application, of course. It's, it's part of the XFCE desktop environment. And um, it's pretty good. It's pretty good, and uh, let's see if we can find it here. XFCE4 terminal. There it is. XFCE4 terminal works like this. It, it will automatically uh, do this client uh, uh, or daemon client or server client way of opening terminals. So if I open another instance of XFCE4 terminal, you will see. That also got detached uh, from the, uh, yeah, it opened it like this, just like with URXVTC, and it also doesn't create a new instance here. And you can see we are, uh, with one instance of XFC for terminal, it's about 50 megabytes, but two instances is also like 50 megabytes. This is actually, actually cheaper in a way than URXVT, because your XVT, uh, it, uh, we didn't really look at that, but it increases with about two megabytes per instance you open. But here with this terminal, it, it actually only increases like on average one megabyte per terminal you open. So this is actually very uh, uh, memory efficient as well. It's, it's much more memory efficient than Xterm. Remember 10 terminals of Xterm, that's about 150 megabytes. And here we can easily get uh, 10 terminals and, and with, without getting over 60 megabytes with this GTK3. Uh, this is also, by the way, this is the latest version, the Devel uh, package of XFC4 terminal I, I'm using. So 4.17, I guess. I don't know, we can see it here. About Oh, ah, that's right. They don't use the same versioning on XFC4 terminal. Um, so... It is quite lightweight, uh, this as well. And the thing is, this is true for uh, Mate terminal and Gnome terminal. I tested them that as well. They they all kind of, uh, they are basically the same uh, application. They use, I think I have it installed, right? 
yeah, now I have set it up to because I was experimenting a bit with this um, show menu bar to to start it without the menu bar and stuff and, and trying out setting fonts and stuff like that. Uh, I'll get back to, to why I was experimenting with that, with that. But it is actually more or less the exact same program as XFCE Terminal. It uses the same GTK widget here to create this terminal and it also, um, all of them do this automatic uh, server, uh, terminal server thing here. I think they all use Dbus to achieve that server thing. And also we, I guess we can look here at GNOME Terminal and, and you can see it, it's almost identical. Actually GNOME Terminal, it, it um, um, broadcasts itself as a GNOME Terminal server here. So it actually says that in... in uh, but the memory usage of GNOME Terminal and XFCE Terminal, it's, it's identical. And I also tested MATE Terminal and it's, it's the same thing. So it's really a matter of, of which way to um, of preferences, and I guess it's it's a little bit about like gra uh, yeah how this stuff is organized and look. And and in my opinion, Mate terminal has really nice settings, but the, the, all of them do actually. They, they they are equally good, I guess. It it doesn't really matter. And I was a bit surprised by this these metrics at least uh, how. Uh, how efficient and, and lightweight they, they actually are. Um, but there are more metrics to uh, terminals. There is one terminal here. Now, it, it, this is also out of date and broken on Arch, by the way. So, I, and it's also weird that they even added this to the official repositories because it is kind of a beta so software. But this is a new terminal, uh, Sati with a Z. Um, this was flagged out of date in uh, end of May, and I I have it installed, but it doesn't work. If you try to start Sati here, you just get an error. Uh, error border expected. There, there's something wrong with the with that particular build. Uh, so you have to use the command line option border, and then set it to a number like four or whatever here. And that border is like the padding of, of the terminal window. And Sati is is a new. Uh, uh, GPU accelerated terminal like Kitty and Alacrity, but it is using um, a more lightweight version of OpenGL. So this this is supposed to work on on Raspberry Pis also, which I think like um, you you cannot use Alacrity. If, if if I understand this correctly, I haven't tested this at all myself, but I think that you cannot use, for example, Alacrity on a Raspberry Pi because it, it needs like OpenGL instructions that are not uh, supported on, on the kernel or because it has such a limited GPU. But this is supposed to work even on a very weak uh, GPU, but it is still GPU accelerated. Uh, but all of these uh, Kitty, Sati, Alacrity, they, they use a, like more 80 uh, megabyte or more uh, for a single instance. And I don't, Sati doesn't have this server. So, so here the, it multiplies. If I open three Sati terminals, then that's like 86 megabytes times three. So this is a complete no go for me. 15, 15 of these, that, that would mean. Um, uh, like over one gigabyte of, of memory and and now you start to see here this actually matters you know you I have to, if I want to use my workflow which I do want to use I have to have this memory usage in in consideration uh, I, I, I and I also want to be clear I, I think that I could I could uh, use uh, XFC terminal or gnome terminal uh, that that would work for me. But this Sati I cannot use. Uh, Kitty, Kitty actually have um, uh, a way to, to start it as a server as well. Kitty just slightly more than than Sati ninety one point three. It's also it's the same thing as like GPL uh, accelerated uh, uh, emulator. Um, you can start it like this with short option one. So the digit one, and then I like to do the touch. Uh, 
because then it starts it to touch like this and then you can open multiple instances and they will share the, the same uh, memory or the same process so if we can find it here kitty yeah now it uses 105 uh, megabytes here for three so i guess i guess kitty kitty and alacrity are on par memory wise with xterm actually um, alacrity is a bit weirder uh, just quickly here alacrity because you start alacrity like this just start it and we can see it here and Alacrity, there it is, 78.2 megabyte. Uh, Alacrity is uh, w one reason you want you might want to use Alacrity is that it is like cross-platform. It have, as I understand, great Wayland support. Uh, that might be true for Kitty as well. Uh, but this also, I think this works on Windows uh, also. Alacrity, uh, and that that is a pro for some. Um, but Alacrity is probably the one that is most different from from the others it does a lot of things differently and one thing is that to start uh, because if i do this again here now ala 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 i hate the name alacrity that will just start another uh, alacrity instance so here it mu multiplies the the memory usage but you can do alacrity message create window because it also automatically, when you start Alacrity, it also automatically opens an uh, IPC socket. So now, when you send a message like this, it will uh, create a new window uh, using the same process. And that's how you can achieve the same, uh, about the same uh, memory usage as Kitty, meaning it is on par with Xterm uh, for my. Uh, use case here. I, I would end up at like 150 megabyte range if I open 50 terminals uh, and have them active. I guess. Um, but um, he, here is uh, why I don't, why I can't use Alacrity because it's not just memory consumption as I have uh, shown you here. Uh, now we have a couple of my different terminals open. What I really wanted to illustrate here is that I, I really like to have it like this, to have them different terminals have different purposes and different, and I think it's it's valid to have them in different fonts, color schemes, wh whatever. Um, but that is kind of, you cannot do that with Alacrity because with Alacrity, it works like that. You start Alacrity, uh, with a command like this and then you can send messages to that IPC channel the thing is you cannot pass any other options so you cannot say okay open uh, uh, an alacrity uh, with the IPC um, but you cannot say open it with this font or these colors or something like that you can only set the colors uh, with the command line options on the first process uh, and then it will use that it might work, I haven't tested this, but that's too much of a hack for me to use it anyways, that maybe if you edit the settings while Alacrity is running, I wonder if that works. I guess we could quickly test it. So let, let's do that just so I'm not spreading fake news here. But even if that is the case, I think that is way too hacky to, to use. Uh, open, oh, I have it here, Alacrity YAML. Because I was actually testing out some stuff about this, but this I haven't tested this, so I don't know if it works. Let's set this to go mono save and then uh, alacrity message create window. I wonder if it will use go mono here now, or no, you can see I whoa, that's that's kind of cool. I changed the font, it actually changed the font in the running. I, I didn't have to do anything, I didn't have to reload. So, fixed, fixed, sys. I guess that answer, yeah, it immediately changes uh, the fonts, the settings in, in the terminal. And that is, in a way, that is a nice feature, right? But it that makes it impossible to use multiple terminals. 
Uh, and that is also, by the way, how GNOME terminal works. Uh, so GNOME terminal, if you change the font, it will change the font in every single open GNOME terminal uh, uh, window. So that also makes, that makes GNOME terminal for me a no-go. Except CE terminal is uh, the only one. I don't think you can do it with Mate either, but I didn't look that closely into Mate, but GNOME or except CE terminal has a command line option to set the font. So you can set font and with this you can also set font size. And that is kind of the only thing I need because I set the colors, I use a, a method that always works. So that, that works in, in even alacrity that would work to set independent color schemes. I, I have a hack to do that. Uh, but the font, I, I wasn't able to set font individually for, for any other terminals than uh, um, Xterm, URXVT, and XFCE for terminal uh, that I tested here. I also installed uh, and tested, or I, I did barely tested it, but console, which is the KDE uh, default uh, terminal emulator. You see, if I, if I want to install it, I have to install like 39 packages. Okay, whatever, let's do that then. There. And then let's start console, console. Here we have that, and as as we all know, X, X, or KDE uses the Qt uh, thing to do this. Or console. No, I guess we can close that. Console is the heaviest of, of all of them. It it comes in here at 118 megabyte of. of RSS for a single window here and I'm sure I haven't looked into it you can probably run this in a server because there are so many settings as with as with all uh, um, KDE applications but this is really not my my jam here I'm just saying but uh, and you can probably I just assume that you can open like a console with different fonts. Uh, I, I'm sure that works there. Um, but I'm not interested in it since it is a KDE application. Um, I don't want all of those. I don't want to install 40 packages just for a terminal. Uh, if I was using KDE or a Qt based uh, desktop environment or whatever it will probably make a lot more sense, but right now it doesn't. Haven't tested any GTK2 versions here of applications, and so LX term, if that is a thing, I don't, I guess it's called that LX term, uh, LX terminal. This is probably just a, 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 a GTK2 uh, version of XFCE terminal or GNOME terminal or Mate terminal, but uh, yeah, that's that's let's not let's not get off topic here and talk about GTK <laughs> at all there. Okay, but there is one last metric here which is um, kind of interesting, and there was actually a reason I wanted to open this Sati page here because there is a good link on that. Measured typing latency of SATI compared to others. There are more of these uh, la uh, terminal latency comparis comparisons out there. Uh, but this is like a, a, an interesting metric. Typing latency of various terminal, terminal emulators. And typing latency, it means the time it takes when I click a key on my keyboard and the time it takes for it to appear in the terminal window. Um, we can see X term is extremely fast. It's it's uh, like it can be as low as one uh, millisecond. Here we can see minimum one mil millisecond, but median is one ninety six milliseconds. That's extreme. It, it it is instant really, and you, I can tell the difference. Be ha having used URXVT for so long, and URXVT is one of the worst as we can see here. Um, URXVT is almost 
the median is almost 20 milliseconds. Um, so I, I, I immediately noticed uh, <laughs> a, a difference here and it felt, it, I, I can't, can't lie, it feels very nice with low latency. Sati is almost as or almost it's it, it's good it's very good 5.5 the, the reason Xterm is so fast is because Xterm is so goddamn old it's like it was it is from the 80s Xterm the original version of Xterm so it was like written for a, an old version of, of Xorg uh, um, originally it is maintained now of course and it isn't like old where they have after it, it have unicode support i i think i'm not sure but i think it have um emoji support now even i'm not 100 sure but that i kind of think so but it doesn't matter because i don't care about i don't want to i don't even care if my web browser have emoji support to be honest uh, but whatever it it is modernized uh, in many ways <laughs> it have been updated since the 80s that's what i'm trying to say but one thing that hasn't really been updated is the way it it uh, captures um uh keyboard it, it it uses this really raw way of communicating with the x server that that is like no one does that anywhere because it's extremely complicated to do that and weird and awkward to maintain that but since it exists and it works and they use it here that's why it is so fast and no, no one comes close uh, surprisingly, the ones that comes closest are Sati, Kitty, and Alacrity. The OpenGL, uh, um, OpenGL <coughs> uh, based uh, uh, emulators, because they don't use uh, Xlib in the in, in the same sense. Uh, whatever. And we can see Sati is really good. And in, in one metric, both Sati and Kitty is better than Xterm because we can also see these boxes are have different size here. The boxes that, that measures, you see the minimum and then you have um, the maximum. Or so I, I'm not 100% sure here, but the boxes here, they mean, uh, uh, um, they mean the difference basically. So the variance uh, of the latency. And we can see that with Alacrity, at least when this test was done here. Now this is quite old. This is from January 2021. So it is already 18 months old, this page here. So don't take this with a grain of salt. They might have, they might very well have improved this in Alacrity, for example, here. But Alacrity is almost, it, it, it's actually very bad to have this much variance between uh, key presses. Uh, and we can see that Kitty has almost no variance whatsoever. It's like every every key press takes the same amount of time, and that 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 makes different a difference when you have programs like this, you know, where you is uh, it doesn't make a difference for the actual test, but like the experience is is it makes a difference there. If you would have very high uh, variance here, that that would be distracting in a way. Uh, in a very subtle uh, and hard to <laughs> pinpoint for yourself what's it doesn't really feel right and that is probably how alacrity felt uh, 18 months ago at least so i'm just saying this might be uh, completely different much better now but i don't think that these boxes have moved around so much i don't think that the urxvt box is that much closer to this end uh, and here we have GNOME terminal, and I guess GNOME terminal can represent XFCE and and uh, Matea and and those guys, which have a very high latency. It's the median is, and again, 18 months ago, the median was uh, 28 milliseconds. So compared to, to X term two milliseconds. Uh, that, that's quite a lot uh, and you can you can feel it you know it doesn't it is not something that matters it doesn't matter it's not like it 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 i, I really want to <laughs> say to make sure that that's clear that even if you would the thing is you don't type you cannot type that fast you can probably type this fast uh, that is about yeah i i actually type this fast because this is like four clicks a second that is that is like not uh, in human typing speed, but this 
if you would type this, that would be like 30 clicks <laughs> per second, I, I think, maybe, or whatever. No, 50 clicks per second, right? Yeah, 50, 50 key presses per second you need to, to type to, to get up to this. And that's, that's 10 word per second. And that means, uh, what is that? 600 words per minute typing speed. If you have that, then you are, then, then this would affect you, but it doesn't affect you. Even if you would type faster, the, the characters come through, they just get, there's just a lag before they show up. And that might also make you think that, yeah, but that I, I don't even type as fast as you do. Uh, I, I, I type, I type at like 50 millisecond, uh, 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 hertz between my, my clicks or something like that. But it's, it's the lag. It's the lag when you click the key and it shows up. So it, even if you type slower, you will notice the difference. Whatever, whatever. But this is a metric. This is definitely a metric, uh, to consider. And of course, another metric is the GPU accelerated uh, terminals. They, they kind of feel nicer and smoother when you move the terminal window around. You, just this is different, even with a blank terminal and especially with a busy terminal with a G GPU uh, accelerated one, it just feels moves smoother, um, updates uh, the actual graphics in the terminal uh, uh, faster and, and more fluently. So, so that's definitely also a metric. So you see, all of them have um, reasons to exist. And of course, we haven't talked about ST at all. I also have that installed and ST memory usage is on par with Xterm. Uh, it doesn't have a server based, so, so it is basically the same thing as Xterm. ST and ST <laughs> to change the font in ST, I think, or maybe it has an option. I should check here before I say that. Maybe it actually have an option for setting. Yeah, you can actually set the font with the command line option. Yeah, that, that's really good. So I could also use uh, ST. That would be on par resource wise with Xterm and it have the features I, I need, which is setting individual fonts. That is, that is really the only thing that I really need. Uh, if that doesn't exist, then it's a no go. So Alacrity is a no go for me and, um, GNOME terminal, no go. XFC 4 terminal is a go. So why would anyone use these terminals since they are apparently the worst and they are also kind of the worst in memory consumption at, in, in, or they aren't because they, these guys are actually worse than this. Uh, but the obvious, obviously you, you use GNOME terminal if you use GNOME desktop environment. Obviously you use XFCE terminal if you use XFCE desktop environment because often they are interlinked with the desktop environment uh, on a settings level that is really uh, comfy. You know, you, you, you can open the control panel in quotation marks and, and see, hey, terminal settings, just click an icon there. I don't know, I have XFCE settings, so uh, wonder if it, we cannot see it there. XFCE, or maybe I don't have that actually. No, I pro settings manager. I don't think that is what I'm looking for here. Uh, settings, or maybe it is settings manager. Yeah, here it is. So here you can see it opens this, and I, I it displays this in the settings here, and there there are other integrations to. Um, so now I can bring up the settings for XFC terminal without even even having the terminal open, blah, blah, blah. It's just nice. Of course, if you use a desktop environment, you use a desktop environment provided uh, terminal. And same with the console. If you use KDE, it would then it would be the other way around. You would have to pull a lot of unnecessary dependencies just to run a stupid GTK3 terminal. No one does that. Uh, but... Um, but now I am here uh, wondering what, what to do, because um, to me, there are two things. One might seem silly. I like to be able to, to have different fonts for different terminals. That is, that is I, I need that feature. I also uh, need it, need the terminal emulator not to, to bloat my, my memory consumption. Uh, and 
not bloating memory consumption, UrxVT. Another reason I like to use UrxVT is I have used it for seven goddamn years uh, <laughs> and, and in a way don't want to mess around with this stuff at all. Um, uh, 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 so for me using UrxVT that means zero configuration because I have already configured it. If you don't use UrxVT, it's not zero configuration. You have to configure it a bit. Which is another, I guess, metric here. How do they work out of the box? But I, I would say, whatever, whatever. No, that is not even a metric in a way. Uh, and it, it, it doesn't matter at all to me. If I can change the font, that is enough. I will change the font. Um, but... Um, one thing I know is that, or I don't know, because uh, I actually talked to the old maintainer here of, of this package uh, and he said that he, he would try to, to see if, if anyone can will adopt this package of the other package maintainers. But uh, there's no guarantee for that to happen and there's no guarantee that what's happened now doesn't happen again. Because apparently Arch uh, package maintainers, they don't care at all about what packages are popular, what, what people use. They, they package what they want to package. They maintain what they want to maintain and they uh, neglect what they want to neglect. That's up to the package maintainers. And they do this for free. It's open source. Uh, deal with it is the message we as users get. And of course, Arch Linux is have AUR, so that's how we deal and cope with with things not being in the official repositories. That's how it's always been. But it's, I don't know. Uh, I think it looks bad when when like, I think this should get pulled uh, from the official repositories. That would be better than uh, just having this outdated package. Because the thing is, it's it's not a big deal to update to this this one here. But whatever. Let's not get into what needs to be done and stuff like that. But sometimes there are reasons because uh, let's see if we can find that uh, quickly here. Uh, this is another another one. I, I, I actually nagged them about a couple of, uh, probably a couple of years ago now. Um, Audacity. I don't think, no, it's still <laughs> this version. This has been, let's see how old it is, the flag here. Flagged out of date 2020. Uh, uh, so, uh, and this will probably never get updated, but there is very good reasons for not updating this. And it's not, this is not about, you know, Audacity is now, some people might call it spyware because it's, uh, it, it, it was purchased by a private entity who immediately implemented uh, telemetry and then they took out the telemetry and then I think they put it back. I, I don't remember, uh, whatever. This is not about that. This, they... Arch maintainers decided on, hey, screw screw Audacity, we're not updating that. Because Audacity made this very weird decision of creating their own version of WX widgets. So you have to you have to build a custom version of WX widgets for only for this. And yeah, I 100% I agree with the decision here not supporting that because that's ridiculous, you know, uh, or maybe you don't know. And if you don't know, be glad. Uh, but that's that, that's very reasonable uh, to not update this. Uh, even if it says here, build date last updated uh, on these these things doesn't mean that it is the latest version anyways because they they often update packages uh, because uh, like dependencies have updated and stuff like that they can still build an old version with new dependencies and so on so this is kind of what you have to what you uh, how you can I identify a package being uh, out of date or the official uh, web page because someone must have seen that, you know, hey, Audacity has gotten a new version and then you flag it on Arch here if, if, if you see that. Because, yeah, many, a lot of things has actually happened with Audacity since this. Uh, and also Audacity, it is kind of whatever. It, we, we are sidetracking here too much. But that that's a point where there's a reason. And I I still not sure. I have... 
have not decided what to do here uh, regarding this terminal uh, um, shenanigans. But I think I will do this because I have this script here, as I uh, mentioned in the beginning. And this is actually how I lo uh, start terminals. I use this i3 term uh, script. Just start it like that. It just starts terminal. Uh, but I can start it with a special instance name. And then it will also have that as a title. And we can see the instance name up here. Is that and one thing that this program does is also it always sets the title to uh, um, the actual path or the dev path of the terminal whatever and that is when I have that set up I can change color scheme here with this Dirtac uh, menu thing and this this actually works for any type of term terminal it doesn't matter it works for GNOME terminal Alacrity Kitty it works for all of them as long as I can. I know this address and I can and that is also something I tested I can do this on all terminals uh, even if it's a bit of a dirt hack uh, sometimes or all, all of them except kitty I couldn't do this with kitty but uh, all others I managed to set the, the this title so that's another thing you see I have a bunch of these weird <laughs> uh, lab requirement here uh, but uh, this i3 term it does a lot of uh, other or a lot but a bunch of other things you can set the font with command line options here but it also automatically sets the font if you set the auto tile uh, option auto tile option it will automatically set uh, the font to a large font if you open it in this terminal and if I open it in this uh, container uh, you see the command here i3 term instance auto tile i3 term uh, or auto tile is the option auto tile like that it will have a small font while well, the same command in this container gives me a large font and the same is true here so it, yeah and the reasoning here is of course a large font in these I can, if I really want to have a large font, I can do i3 term font large. Oh, ah, that's right. Ah, that actually doesn't work here. I should make sure, yeah, that font is not set here. And not, oh. Font. So now it should work. <laughs> font large and auto tile. Auto tile. There. Now I have large font in this terminal. But but I don't want to have large fonts in these because usually this is the layout I usually have. So, and having a, a large font here and large font for me like is larger than this. I. You cannot fit anything in a terminal like that. Um, whatever, that is what I want. I want to have large fonts and small fonts and sometimes this uh, cursive font here just because I think it's pretty. Uh, whatever. Um, but this uh, program, it also, uh, it, it before it starts a terminal, it uses i3 get here to see if uh, the terminal I'm trying to create, if that terminal al already exists, it will just uh, use i3 run instead, so I can toggle it. That's uh, how I can toggle this. It's the same command, um, i3 term. You see, it's a quite, here is that command, instance, term small, font large, palette, so I can set the palette with the command line option here. To, to start it uh, grayscale light. Now it doesn't have that because we changed it with uh, the menu here, but whatever. I think I made a video in the past about that, but if I start it, it has that uh, palette. So it also toggles it with i3 run, it's nice. And you can also have it, uh, I have done uh, quite a lot of experiments with this lately here now to start programs. I think I found this to be the best way, even if it is a bit weird now. I noticed that right just now in, when I look at the process here, that it have all of these lingering script files, but I guess that's, I just have to live with that. 
I guess I could source these files instead. No, no, I need to do it like this because this makes it portable. This makes it work with any terminal emulator, at least launching commands here. Because I, everything I want to launch as commands in the terminal, I, I redirect that to a temporary file. Then I make that temporary file executable and the terminal command I, I execute is actually execute this temporary file. Uh, because this E option is really, really, it is supported. All terminal emulators support this. Even if GNOME terminal uh, has deprecated it, it still supports it. Uh, all of them support it, but they do it somewhat differently. And it is a very awkward way of executing commands. Um, but I have found a way here that it, I, I dare saying that it always works now to execute commands as long as you are allowed to create executable files in to make this temporary file executable but yeah it works for me at least here now um, but there are there are a lot of small variances how you set the font how you set geometry if they use long options short options like uh, st only uses short options um, your XVT X term uses long options, but uh, with a single dash. And uh, some of them don't allow you to set some uh, 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 settings with command line options and others do it a different way. Some of them start these servers automatically. Some don't. Some detach the, the, the terminal instance automatically. Some of them don't. So you have to start them with different ways and stuff like that. But I think I will make this script work with xterm urxvt. I know I can do that because I have done that already. It now, right now it works with uh, xterm, but it could just as well work with, uh, uh, and uh, I used to use it with urxvt, so I know those two works. But I kind of know that uh, I can make xfce4 terminal also work uh, and, and have all, all of the, all of the features of, of this working with xfce4 terminal. But then I don't think there is any other terminal that can support everything that I uh, uh, am looking for with changing the font, setting uh, instance name, you, which you cannot, for some reason, GNOME terminal, they have uh, just nulled, uh, the command line options are there. GNOME terminal help all. You can see these are all the command line options for GNOME Terminal and it have command line options here, GTK options to set the class and the instance name, but these simply just don't work. Nothing happens when you do that. But I just noticed that they have actually uh, an option for setting the role, which is another, uh, uh, it's another uh, um, property you can set on a window. And yeah, the, the, it isn't displayed here because it isn't, if I open GNOME terminal, there, we can see here, window role. This is the default window role, but this you can actually set set this command line uh, or set this window property with command line options. And this is something uh, that I am interested in being able to do, set the properties here, um, because then you can write these. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I should have said that for i3 King, my window ruler uh, program, it, it it wants uh, terminal windows to have at least one custom property it can look for. Uh, and I have always used instance, but I could in theory also use role if that is the case. But title that is reserved for, um, I cannot use title because I use that to for the path here. So that doesn't, that doesn't work as a criteria in my window ruler. So that's another thing I need to be able to do. Uh, and I was experimenting. Th this is a dirt hack way to do it on the GNOME terminal. You can actually set the instance if you do this, but it's it was kind of slow to do this, uh, to be honest. But it is kind of po there is always a way to do things, but sometimes it just gets weird, you know. Um, 
but I think I will finally do that now uh, because about a year ago or something, I, I I actually spent quite a lot of time on this script to try to make it complete 100% terminal agnostic. But I kind of gave up on that because it's not possible. They all do things so differently, and some uh, and you always end up in this weird. No, it's just, it's simply not possible to set the font in Alacrity. If you do that, you will set it in all open windows or whatever, something like that, you know. Um, so I will support these three terminals, uh, UREXPT, Xterm and XFCE4 terminals. And those are also the alternatives that I uh, look for myself. And I will also support ST because it's easy to add. It's ST is uh, more or less compatible with Xterm in this sense. So ST, I will add that to that list as well. But then I will not add any, any, any other uh, terminals to, to the script. I will not do that. Uh, don't nag me about it. And I will publish this script as well. Um, so other people can en enjoy it. Uh, and of course, it, it is dependent on, on um, i3 get and some i3 list also but this is only done if you are actually on a i3 fira workspace and stuff like that I, I would make it efficient and it is it is efficient this i3 term it, it it's uh, uh, actually fast you don't notice anything you can see here i can open if i open a bunch of terminals here there i open 12 terminals it, 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 it's it's fast it's very very fast and it knows what to do with, with, with them. It knows what form to set and, and stuff like that. And all of those terminals, by the way, it actually did execute this i3 list command here. So that is the slowest way to do it is when you use this auto tile, which I use there for, for these guys. No problem. Um, yeah, so that's that's what I will do here. It, I think it will only take me a, a and it will not take me that long to make this work for, for those terminals I just mentioned. Uh, and if I just ignore the existence of the other terminals, it could in theory be used for, I, I, or I don't know, I will not uh, like console. I don't care about it. I'm sorry. Uh, but maybe this could also easily be uh, adopted to that. But I, I, I simply don't care uh, for, for it myself. I'm, I'm like the arch maintainers, I guess, in that sense here. Uh, and the nice thing, if, if I do this properly now, then I can very easily here uh, switch between uh, Xterm, URXVT and uh, XFCE terminal and try to decide which one of them I will use. So reason to, for me to use Xterm, lowest latency by far, feels nice. It's a cool, it's also a cool uh, um, application b because it's so old. Uh, I, 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 I like that and Xterm, it, Whatever, it's it's a cool application. It's a cool application to, to use, in my opinion. UREXVT, reason to use that, lowest uh, by a margin uh, memory consumption of all emulators. Uh, and it have been also reason to use a UREXVT. I have been using it for, for seven years. I like it. I, I have nothing against UREXVT. <laughs> The only thing I have against it is that it is not maintained by Arch uh, official repository.